Welcome back to another episode of Baxter's Buzz. I am Baxter E. Hall. Welcome to my brain. Welcome to my frequency. Enter at your own risk. Uh, today, I have a special guest with me. He is a, a writer for The, the Athletic, uh, covering the Detroit Pistons. He's also the cardigan of the Bun and Cardigan uh, mm -hmm. podcast. James Edwards III. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well, man. How are you? Good, good. Thanks again for the time. Um, yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. I don't know how many folks at, at 7 and 8 was watching um, the sports reporters at like 9 in the morning uh, on, Sundays. on Sundays, but like yeah. that was me. Yeah, so same I always had an affinity for writers. I, I love the perspective that you guys have and you know, I think it's a pretty cool job just in general. So, um, yeah, it has its perks. Um, there's very few things I'd rather, uh, be doing, uh, but there is, yeah, it comes with its own, uh, people call them first world problems, but yeah, those are, it comes with its own, uh, ups and downs for sure. 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 I guess the, the key is, um, finding a job or finding something that you're so passionate about that, the good stuff, you can kind of, you know, it allows you to kind of push through mm -hmm. the, the things that aren't so great about it, right? Yeah, I think the big thing for me, and this can kind of sound crazy, like my love for basketball has dwindled over the last four years, but my love for telling stories has increased. Mm. Um, like I would say that pushes me through more at this point i don't know like when i was before i was doing this man i was the guy that was watching three games a night on league pass uh reading everything watching every team collected cards till i was like in, in middle school in college and in, in high school like i said we watched every game we hooped every day now it's like i'm so consumed by it it's like my life like my favorite sport right now is like I love soccer. Like yeah. that's my getaway. Like I look forward to when I have an off day and I can sit down and watch my team on Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, whatever. Um, and that's just natural. Like when something is consumes your life, sure. I think I still love basketball. Um, I, I I'm as I'm more knowledgeable now than I was even back when I played and when I watched fifty games a night. Um, <laughs> but it's just like when you when something kind of dictates your life you resent it a little bit sure. like i have to be on call 24 7 in case something happens so naturally that thing starts to annoy you a little it's bit not, yeah it went from like your getaway to like you now you need to get away from that right yeah it's like when you hear musicians all the time like when they get signed or something it's like this used to be fun it ain't <laughs> fun anymore because right. it turns into business so yeah 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 well so I started following you on Twitter years ago. Um, you you guys have developed quite the following, but um, I think that your 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 storytelling that makes sense. That makes sense that you're being more passionate about it. You've been producing some great work. Thank you. Um, I, I I think that the we joked about like what we we're going to talk about. I'm like I'm sure no one's asked you about Kate Cunningham. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to try to hit you with something new. Right. Who? <laughs> right. Um, but but I, I think in, in my in my weird way, I was thinking about it. And I was like, I really hope that more people just learn about your podcast, but also about your writing. I think you're doing some uh, incredible writing, bro. And, and I'm hoping that it. this this added attention sort of shines a, um, a light, you know, a greater light on, on the work that you do. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. So if you would, you know, um, yeah, I think we all kind of hooped, right? And and, and mm -hmm. there was some point where we realized, eh, I'm probably not going to the NBA. Yeah. I, I'm only six foot, so I learned that probably a little bit sooner than you did, maybe accepted that yeah. uh, fate. Uh, but like, talk about your, like, when did you learn that you love writing? Shoot not until college. I knew I wanted to be, uh, I think I've told this story before. Um, when I was like in third grade, my dad, he played college basketball, um, small school. 
was played in Flint high school in Flint. Um, nice. He was like, you got to have a plan B. My dad went on to get like his, my mom and dad both said this, but uh, my dad went on, he gave up the NBA dream early too, but he went on to get on like his masters and stuff. So he was like big into school still is. Awesome. Um, yeah. So like third grade, he was like, well, you got to figure out plan B in case you, you don't make it. And like, we would, my house was a sports family. Like my, like I said, my dad played ball. My mom played soccer. Oh, um, my mom played soccer up until like six years ago. Um, so oh. like we would always have ESPN on Sports Center, and so like I wanted to do that, like the sports anchor, uh, mm. Stuart Scott, Scott Van Pelt, yeah, uh, Linda Cohen, like yeah, that was that's what I wanted to do. Um, then you kind of you get older, internet comes bigger, you start to read and like see people are doing cool stuff. Um, like I always, it was always going to be like sports anchor or sports writer. Like we always had newspapers and all that stuff too. So we had magazines. Like I had, we had ESPN, the magazine sports illustrated. I had all the slams up on my wall. Um, so like, it was, it was always one of those two, but I didn't do like writing in high school. Um, I didn't write my first thing till like sophomore year in college. Hmm. Then, yeah, like I had four years to get in and get out and get a degree and gravitated towards sports writing and got a few lucky breaks and um here we are now i yeah now this is it's who i am i guess yeah how, how long have you been with the athletic since 2017 it'll be four years in august yep i was one of the first i think 20 or 50 writers they hired when they started in 2016 detroit was like the fourth city now wow. it's everywhere yeah, now it's global across the plant across the plant pond. So, so talk about that. You started, uh, you know, when you, you know, I don't want to call it a meteoric rise, but yeah, I mean, I yeah, you just spent a lot of time in the minor leagues, my friend. Yeah, I got lucky. Uh, when I was in college, I worked for like this startup blog called iSports Web that allowed me like blog about the Ravens and also like cover Michigan ball and basketball. So I like got used to a press conference. Um, funny story. This guy named Andrew Hank, who was in the same grade as me. Um, he's actually now the Los Angeles Lakers equipment manager. Oh. So when you see, you watch the Lakers and you see a guy needs a new shoe or new Jersey, Andrew's the guy handing it to him. Um, but he was working for the Atlantic State Journal in college where he was just answering phones at night. Uh, the, if this is an older audience you have. They, they probably know about the, the, the agate page in the newspaper. You look in the back and it has kind of just like a list of scores, pro teams. You go to that part of the paper, you can see all the professional scores, college scores, the local high school scores. Yeah. Uh, so like he would answer calls and like be the one to like input that stuff in like a really simple job. And he's like, hey, my boss is looking for one more person to help with the phones. He's like, do you want to? I was like, I was like, is it paid? He's like, yeah, it's like minimum wage, eight dollars an hour. I was like, yeah, like I needed a job. <laughs> and like, get, I was like, worst come to worst. I, I got experience there. I made money. Best case scenario, like the Lansing State Journal is one of the biggest papers in Michigan. I would say probably behind the Detroit papers, probably the biggest if I had yeah. to guess. And I was like, well get my foot in the door at 18, 19 and do whatever they asked me to do. And maybe this turns into a, not a lot of people start their first job there. Like that's probably like a second job for a sure. lot of people. So sure. if I can get my foot in the door and um, that'd be my first job out of college, like that's a win. And that's what ended up happening. So I grinded in college. Like I gave up Thursdays through Sundays to, for a lot of it to answer phone calls. I answer calls from high school coaches and volleyball coaches and football coaches. Yeah. And then when I graduated, I had, and by that point, he had like given me assignments to do. Like I cover some Michigan State hockey, some small Michigan State basketball games. So like getting better as a writer, he could see it. And yeah, by the time I graduated, they offered me a job and I worked there for two and a half years before I came here. Nice. How did you get on their radar at the athletic? As it's told to me, um, I had written some like big profiles, features, kind of like what I do now covering the Pistons, like kind of like who the people are stories yeah um on local people in lansing and um so like i had gotten a little bit of a, a name if you were like paying attention to sports writing in michigan like if you were a sports writing nerd not like everybody 
I don't say anybody outside of the state <laughs> knew who I was, maybe a few. Um, but yeah, I'd written some sort some stories that were well received and um, I was covering a state championship soccer game and then had to go to, to a state championship baseball game after. And on my way to the baseball game, I get a call from Graham Couch, who was a columnist at the, who is still a columnist at the Lansing State Journal. Like, hey, uh, Craig Custance, who, if you follow the athletic, you know who Craig is. He's one, he's like the Adam Schefter of NHL in America. Um, he started the athletic. Well, he was the guy they hired to start the athletic Detroit. He was like, yeah, he called me asking about you. And he, he's been asking around about young, promising writers who, he could hire to cover the Pistons. Wow. And um, he's like, every time he asked somebody, like my name came up. So mm. um, we talked a few weeks later, or a couple of days later, a few weeks later, whatever. And yeah, um, it, it, I ended up getting hired and it was, I would say, I, yeah, I started in August. I would say the process then started in like May and it was yeah from May to August, kind of wondering what was up. And then, yeah, they got the call in August. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, they got it right. I don't know how, how they did in some of the other markets. I'm sure they swung and missed, uh, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, Like, so so being in sales and just uh, like this networking connector type of guy, sometimes you just have to like pick a side and like just throw some money down on, on a bet that may not seem like the biggest bet, right? Yeah. Um, And uh, you see how people sort of, align themselves with with folks and i just believe in him i believe in her i believe mm-hmm. in their mission their their vision um when i think about what the athletic sounds like that they did was they 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 did some similar things they saw some promise they got some you know some recommendations and then they said hey we're just gonna you know yeah i, th- I think it was a case-by-case basis so like at the time, the Pistons were even more woeful than they were when I covered them. And I, since I've been covering them, believe it or not. Yeah. 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 So it's like for the Pistons, again, we're a subscription based company. It's like, well, they're not very good right now. Let's get somebody young that we believe in and let him grow with this team because nobody, um, it, it might not just have the biggest audience, yeah. which ended up not being true. Um, and thankfully and luckily, I grew and as I grew, I think, um, I don't know if a lot of the fan base grab it became interested maybe because of some are reinterested because of some stories or, um, that big fan base that we all know about Detroit having for years kind of just came back at the, around the same time. So yeah. I don't know what worked out, but for other teams like the lions, as, as you know, the lions are a terrible franchise, but people care. <laughs> so they're going to, they're going to spend big. They're going to go get the big name for the lions guy. Uh, Michigan State, Michigan, they're going to go get the big names for those guys because those those teams will sell subscriptions. Sure, sure, sure. So, I, so I, yeah, yeah. There, there's certain certain like you could take a gamble on the Red Wings and the Pistons and the Tigers because those fan bases are a little more finicky at right. the time yeah. they were, at least now. Um, Detroit does very well in terms of despite having all these bad teams. <laughs> we do pretty good. Yeah. Well, we're always wait, waiting, right? You you know that the Tigers are going to get support. You know that when the Pistons are good, they're going to get support. Mm-hmm. Staying, you know, the Lions get support no matter what. But and the, and the Wings too. I mean, it took a long time for for Wings fans to kind of go, all right, all right, I'm, I've had enough. Because even though they were, you know, barely still making the playoffs and not really no championship aspirations. They still had their folks kind of just, you know, like, hey, we we made it to the playoffs, you know, X amount of years in a row. Yeah, so Red Wings, the Yankees of hockey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so a couple of things that kind of stuck out to me, like you you had this like foresight as like this young eighteen year old, nineteen year old man. If I can just get my foot in the door, um, you've been very strategic. Of uh, you, you know, you, where did you get that from? Like. Who who gave you that knowledge or did this was it something that you kind of came came to you? Like if I can do this when I graduate from college, like that's a pretty forward thinking for an 18 year old. <laughs> yeah. That's a great question. I never thought about that. Um I would say that I don't know, maybe early in life I learned that like a lot of 
success is as, as much as we hate to admit it, love to admit it. It's based on opportunity. Um, as, as hard as you work, I know people that are better at what I do than me, but opportunity or X, Y, Z, certain circumstances don't allow them to get to certain places. Um, and that sucks, but unfortunately, like it's opportunity being at the right place at the right time, knowing the right people like that, as much as it shouldn't be about that, it, it very much is. Um, and then it's up to you to take advantage of that. And I would just say, yeah, I guess I, I pat myself on the back for kind of recognizing at that age at like the Lansing State Journal, if I could start there would be a great starting point. Um, and again, like I, I was I was one of those people that had to like have a job in college. So it's like, oh, you're telling me I'm making eight dollars to be around sports like, yeah, I'll do that. And yeah. on top of that, I have an opportunity like to showcase myself for a potential. I have three year audition for a job like. Okay, I'll do that too. So, um, yeah, Where did I don't that come from though, Jay. Do you know? I mean, I, I... um, I'm always like a, and it's probably we're gonna get deep here. Um, it's probably rooted in like I'm a very I don't like surprises. I don't like things I can't control. Um, I don't like. I think too much. Uh, I I take. I think too much about step two, three, and four instead of like the step I'm on. And I think that's like probably like most people, if they have like any type of anxiety, it's rooted in predicting what's ahead. Mm -hmm. So like my mind naturally is always just kind of thinking if I do this, what's the end, like what, what, what's the ripple effect? What's the end result? Um, I think that's just kind of how I always been. I always, I, I played chess as a kid uh, and that chess is all about, setting up in the moment for down the line for sure so maybe that's maybe that's where it's rooted from i don't know i haven't been to i've been wanting to go to a psychologist I, maybe that's what they would tell me my mind has always just kind of been in those things where it's you play the long game and it's weird because i don't have patience so i don't know it's a very it's a lot of a lot of punches going back and forth in, the, in this Man, brain of mine. yeah and you know for the second time i won't i won't go into detail uh too much but I just, the conference I came from, the, the one of the presenters, he's a um, facilitator of this uh, DISC assessment. Okay. D-I-S-T. Are you yeah. familiar? I've heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting. And so um, he asked for a volunteer, didn't know what I was volunteering for. Eh, why not? You know, so I'm up on stage and, and uh, they were like, we're going to have the crowd ask you questions. And then we're going to try to, they're going to, we're going to let them guess where you are on that sort of that disc wheel. Right. Okay. So maybe, yeah. So, so um, I'm like listening to you now. And since like, I'm like, yeah, he's definitely, you know, I got, I got my, my mind <laughs> on, I, but I, I think it's. Where am I? Do you know, can you tell me? I'm not familiar with you're, the. You're the, the cognitive, uh, the more okay. like planning, like st structure. Yeah. Is where I would, would guess, right. Where you. I think that's fair. Yeah. You need to have things in order, right? Yep. Always early. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. If somebody hits me up at, if you want to hang out, if you want to hang out, you got to hit me up the day before, two days before. <laughs> you can't spring it on me the day of. Yeah. That's it, not how you roll. I, I wish I, I wish it wasn't like that, uh, but it, it is. Well, you know, you got to know who you are. And so I have two young kids, man. And I, and I, um, I just tweeted this out recently, like, Man, if I could, if I can teach, if you could teach your kids like delay gratification, mm -hmm. I'm like you're going to the parent like Hall of Fame, right? If you could yeah. just teach, if you could teach yourself, right? Just hey, put the work in. Don't worry about what's right in front of you, but like just know you're, you know, focus on your inputs, right? I, I think it's, you know, kudos to you for your brain being designed the way it is because I think at 18, 28, 38. It's something that folks are st kind of still kind of struggle with. So um, the place yes, and it's tough. And I'm not to say one line of thinking is better than the other, because I imagine people who are more spur of the moment, people don't uh, spend a lot of time getting worked up about things because they're not thinking about it. They just do. So it's there's gift and curse to everything. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I, I think um, I, 
yeah, you want to have some balance, but sometimes, you know, you, you're you going to fall in one bucket versus the other. That's just the way, mm-hmm. you know, just the way it is. The good thing is, you know, the important thing is understanding kind of where you fall in that yeah. um, so that you can identify that. What So for a, a young writer um, with so many outlets, so much access to everyone between social media and the different blog sites or whatever, like uh, what would you give 18 year old James? Like what kind of advice would you give him? And he's, you know, I think I'd like to maybe do some sports writing, cover, cover my local team or cover a different team. Like what kind of advice would you provide? To myself or to yes. others? Or that's to two any, different answers, eight, I think. To, to any eight, to a 18 year old off the, off the street that you didn't know all right so to that person do what you can to if you know what you want to do whether it's writing anything else um i always say college was the best part of college aside like the the aside from the experience but i mean like what you got out of college was the opportunities it provided it wasn't what you learned in class in my instance it wasn't uh the, the book you read for some people it might be for me, it was the experience that I got from being at Michigan state and the people I got to meet. So first off, um, do whatever you can. If you know what you want to do, try to get, meet somebody work out. You can work on your own today's time, especially if it's writing, you can start your own blog. Right. Um, you can, if you want to write about the Pistons, you can write about the Pistons. You don't need a, a major publication to back you. You can sharpen your tools, sharpen your sword doing that. And I mean, I think people like Bill Simmons, like even back then, like he blogged about the Celtics and ESPN like that. There's you can be a self-made man in today's time yeah, I w- or ma- man or woman. Um, I, I would say, but do whatever you can to get a, get your foot in the door. Pick up an internship, pick up that that job that seems oh, you want me to cover high school swimming on a Friday night while I'm in college? If you want to, if you want your end goal to be, if you want it to be, yeah, go do that. Um, the more you write, the better you are. Read people who you think are good writers and, and take bits and pieces of them. Uh, but the biggest thing is there's three things I always say uh, that I think are most important to success in this. One, go after it, whether it's self-made, reaching out to a local paper, just get the experience, get your foot in the door make a name for yourself too some people just naturally can't do this but i think being a people person is absolutely of utmost importance in this job because it's a lot of small talk it's a lot you're trying to in my case as i try to get to like do stories about getting to know people you're asking like kind of deep questions sometimes right so like you have to build rapport and build trust with people and then three is um don't don't uh don't be afraid to to try things like yeah. something a story that you might not love just do it and see what happens especially when you're young just write as much as you can yeah just sharpen those skills right now for the sake of time um I, i'd be remiss if i if i had if i didn't have a little pistons talk uh for you but we can go until one i got my thing pushed back oh, okay uh, good to like 115 ish so okay cool 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 because i'm not gonna I'm, not, I'm gonna nerd out a little bit but not not hopefully i'm taking some different angles we, no, we start, I've, I've enjoyed this we we started um nobody's ever asked me why i think i'm a i'm a psycho inside in, <laughs> in my brain so i i appreciate that so the D is for dominance, right? On a disc assessment. Um, it's the fast pace. I'm not even worried about the, my last accomplishment. I'm looking towards my next accomplishment, right? Mm-hmm. Influence. Um, in The I is influence. It's more um, extroverted, idea-driven. You jump off a bridge, I jump off, like follower? No, no, no. It's the... It's it's the opposite. It's the it's the Oprah. It's the, oh, it's okay. the Will Smith. It's the yo. 
like I got this idea, I gotta tell everybody about it. Let's yeah. collaborate, let's you know, but that's yeah. like the, the typical extrovert is what you yeah. shaking say. hands and kissing babies. Right, yeah. right. Now the S is steadiness, right? So it's cautious, uh self-sufficient, but but cautious. Um my eyes are getting are better without my glasses, but uh <laughs> They're, they're, uh, what does it say? Anyway, I will come back. Compli and then that C is that compliance. So it's more like uh, patient, more goal oriented, um, more methodical. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so, I, you know, I tend to lean in the, the IS area in my brain, in, in my brain, my my you know this psychoanalysis of James Edwards, you would be more of the 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 C and the S, the steadiness that, but that compliance piece, right? But yes. you definitely have some influence because you have to because you have to kind of put yourself out there for your job, right? So, right. Um, the thing that I did learn is that you can, um, you can change, and it's based on it's based on where you are in your life, maybe where mm -hmm. you are in, in, in your career. Uh, someone said that they had. I they think I'm a little like, what do you say in that? I think a little like right now, there's a little like of the, the dominance in it. Oh like yeah. I'm, I'm trying to like, let it be like, I'm trying to get to that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And like, I think about that often. Yeah. Just as far as like, I need to I need to have this this move in my bag for a certain Yeah, or like I want to be when you read a story of mine, you're gonna walk away. One, it's worth the money, and two, you took away something you didn't know. Or I want you I want to be whenever you read my story, like it's one of the better ones you you've read. Like I there is very much it's just natural competitiveness. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Right. This one is it's it's more around like um I guess personality wise. Oh, like your, overbearing your approach. Yeah. They, oh they, yeah, see that's not me then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I misheard you. You're right. No, no, you want to dominate. I get that. But that's where that compliance piece comes in and that that when that steadiness comes in in my brain, where you like, I know. Okay, talk about that real quick, and then we get to piss and stuff. No, that's fine. When when, you, when you're writing a story, because I am a uh, occasional writer. I you know I, you are a writer. I write occasionally, but I love some of the approaches that you take with some of these things. And then, and some of these things you you're probably like, man, this is unique, but it's it may not land. Right. I mean, you, yeah. you guys are you guys are subscription based. Yep. You you look at your numbers of reviews and comments, I'm sure. Right. Because it's it's important, yeah. um, not because you're an egomaniac, because it's part of your job to kind of see right. how people are responding to your writing. So. Right. Tell me the tell me the first time you said, oh, you know what, this isn't going to this isn't going to be like a super popular, one, but it's important to me. Like, when did you have the guts to sort of like make that call and just say, you know, what? I'm going with this. This is good. It's important. I would say. I don't know if I can think of it the first time. I will say this, though. There are a lot of stories that I know. Won't be big time sellers. Um, but I know that if you read it, if you're already a subscriber you're 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 hooked like it's gonna, yeah you it's, don't it's gonna stick yeah. to the bone it's a it's, to me it's a great story it's a great story but whether it's the person's not as popular um the the subject's not as popular or yeah like there could be many factors into it but to me a good story is a good story and that's what i'm here to do like i'm not here to yeah like all the trade stuff and speculation and sources says like that shit is fun yeah. it's cute but like that's not why i got into this um like i came here to like write interesting stories about people to give you insight into how people are the way that they are and 
why you root for this person. Do you, you root for Isaiah because he plays his ass off? Well, why does he play his ass off? That's why I'm here. Yeah. Um, so uh, there are many stories like I've written features where it's like, it's probably won't be my biggest seller, but like, if you read this, you enjoyed it. And I felt, and I enjoyed writing it. So I would say there's a lot, there's, there's a good amount of it. Like I would say the one I did, um, the other day on uh, Jason Preston. And if you missed that one, kid went to Ohio. Mm -hmm. Um, long story short, didn't play much in high school. The Pistons blogger from Florida right. was big into the Pistons because his mom liked the Pistons. Ended up going to UCF to study journalism. He finished his orientation, and a buddy asked him to play in one last AAU tournament with him. And this kid's now 6'4". He's not six foot anymore, but he's 6'4", <laughs> and he balls out at these tournaments. And then these college coaches and prep school coaches hit him up and ends up at Ohio where he leads them to the NCAA tournament, and they beat Virginia. Now, that's a great story, phenomenal story. Does everybody care? No, not everybody cares about the kid from Ohio who's might be drafted in the first round, might be drafted in the second round and blog like, but it's a great story. If you read it, you might, you walked away rooting for that kid. For sure. So, and that it did well, but it's not like, it's not, it didn't like, I'm not buying a new house off that. Yeah. <laughs> so does the subscription based model, does that give you more autonomy for stuff like that? Yes. Because people are already paying. Yes. So I would say the subscription, like many people, like there are people who love the the rumors and the scuttlebutt and some of my biggest stories are off that stuff. Um, but I would say some of my biggest are also off of features, but I think the features are what you get somebody to subscribe. However you get them to subscribe, maybe you capitalize on a moment and or they really wanted to know who the Pistons could trade for and they subscribed there, but then you kept them because you wrote a really cool story on somebody. So yeah, like this, you're, you're not asking somebody to, to click on your story. Like that's, that has its own challenges. I would say it's much harder to get somebody not only to click on your story, but after they click on it and realize that they have to pull out their wallet and then credit card to read it, that's much harder to do. Sure. Um, and so you have to, those first grasps before it cuts off, they got to be nice because you want people to want to keep clicking. But it also gives you a lot of opportunity to, to experiment. Like, I instead of writing a big story on Wayne Ellington because he's been in the league and played for so many teams, like everybody, how many people would outside of Detroit, maybe not even in Detroit, would read a long thousand, two thousand word story on <laughs> Wayne Ellington? Not many. But if you right. if you for, if you phrase it like a pop quiz which I did where I just like, it was like a SAT where here's a question about your NBA career. Do you remember this? Like people might read that because it's different. So yeah, it gives you, it gives you leeway to be creative and, and free. And not all click baity. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like, um, it's the difference between a, a hit and a song that you listen to 20 years from now. Yeah. Like right? suspect. That's like suspects. Yeah, I listen to suspect more than <laughs> if I ruled the world. If we're being honest, and 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 you should, because yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, that it had its moment, right? Yep. Um. All right. Now, I want to get into some piston talk. Okay. Allow me to nerd out a bit. Okay. Yep. Um. I. I've. You know. I have a I have a message for you, and I'll save that to the end. My buddy said you better get your get get your boy in line. It was it was uh, well, I guess I might as well say it now. I was like, oh, you know, I'm I'm gonna have a conversation with James, and he took a screenshot of um, I actually got him to subscribe. Oh, for no. you for you, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Was this um, recently? He he subscribed a few months ago, but okay, it was cool. based off like a a retweet of mine. That I, while I was bigging you up, so, something you know, something dope you had done. But I you appreciate know. that. Thank you. Yeah, but what's his um, name? His name is Can Brian. You share his name? Shout out to Brian. Thank yeah. you, Brian. Yeah, Brian does. Um, we I have this other piece where I I call it cool motif. It's okay. like the it's like the music. Um, when we talk music, yeah, so that's Brian, the one I that's the one I needed to be on. We I, you, we'll I'm talk. I'm gonna we'll ask set... you to come back because we started yeah, we'll, we'll... that. 
Yeah, maybe we'll end the summer. We'll do we'll, we'll when it gets di- after summer league when it's quiet for a month and a half again. We'll yeah, we, we can get back on that. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, so Brian's a big basketball. I mean, this is part of why we're good friends. Uh, music fan, basketball, you know, basketball yeah. fan. But he took a screenshot of um a, a story, your hypothetical story uh, trades. Okay. And you know the one is kind of taken off a bit. The Shea it's... one. Not the Shea one. It's the it's the Houston and all the and the, the number oh, two. Oh, okay. And... Yeah. Um. So you your story again an idea was to say okay. How do I make a trade where where Detroit is ac- actually entertains it right? And it was, it was Houston uh, number two, and then. What what year is the the trade that the, the first runner that Detroit gave to? If I recall, the trade was two. Either Houston has twenty three and twenty four this year, I think. So one of those. Mm-hmm. Detroit's pick back, so it's a weird pick where it's like it depends on where Detroit finishes if Houston gets it. So it goes down the line for a couple of years until okay. it eventually goes over. So they get their pick back, and then Houston would give up another first in twenty twenty three. And then a 2026 20, first that they got from Brooklyn. I think that mm. was the trade for number one. A whole bunch. A, a whole lot. bunch of stuff. Yeah. A lot. That's so, what I – the whole point of that story was like if I'm trading the number one pick, because I went to all my coworkers, I was like, give me your opinion on this. I want a lot. I'm not trading this sure. for just e- even value. I want a lot. Sure, sure. So And so here's the way – here's the way that I've been looking at it. Um, cause I keep, I keep thinking like, okay, best case scenario, right? We know we, a lot of us have actually watched a little bit of Kate and know some backstory and we, we aren't just listening to everyone else. We ha- have a little bit of insight on our, you know, from our, you know, from our very, uh, watching and yeah, yeah. you know, we may, may not have the scout eye, but we know, you know, they're supposed to know a little bit about basketball. Um, yeah. and then there's the people that are just they've just been hearing his name for the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. So this is how I try to justify it. Okay. Let's say, at, let's say he's uh, Jason Tatum, right? Yep. Uh, you know, and then, and then let's say uh, Jalen Green is Brad Bill. Okay. So in my brain, and this is what I responded to, to, uh, to Brian you know, best case scenario, right? These these guys aren't just regular guys, you know. But would you trade that? And I'm going to ask you, if you're the GM for Detroit, if you're Trey Reaver, do you trade? Do you make that trade for to Houston if you're if you, if Jason Tatum is who you are giving up? Yeah, I mean, it it, it all comes down to how close Troy and the company. And the staff see Cade and then Mobley and Green. Like if it's right, I'm asking you though. Oh, like me to be the GM? No, like I'm saying, do, like if you if you're saying, okay, we know we know this guy's gonna be Jay, and this guy's gonna be Bradley Beal. Yeah, like we know for a fact. We know that for a fact. I'm doing the trade. Hmm. Okay. Doing a tra- now, I, I those think are big t- ifs, but by the way, yeah. those are if huge. If I know ifs. for a fact that those, if I know for a fact that Cade's gonna be top, uh, uh, what is Tatum right now? I don't know. It's hard to like. Uh, I mean, Tatum could get into the top five. He's not now, and Beal's probably he's ten to twenty for sure. Um, so you're you're obviously you know for a fact you're getting a really good player. Mm-hmm. Neither have won anything yet. Um, Jason's still very young. You would expect him to. But then I'm also getting three other firsts. Yeah, maybe I'm dumb. But if I know for a fact one's Bradley Beal and I know for a fact the other's Jason Tatum, I'm also going to – I'll take Bradley Beal and, and three other first-round picks, me personally. Okay. Okay. Um, but I'm also a big Bradley Beal guy. <laughs> so <laughs> that might not have been – like did if you would have said, did I, if okay, you would have said what, Zach Levine – then it's like, oh, give me Jason Tatum nine times out of ten. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we got – so give me – what's another cop? What's the guy in between those two? Um, for each one? For just the guard. For Instead of Bradley Beal, 
like people compare Jalen Green to Zach Levine. Right, but give me, yeah. give me, a, I'm thinking about one other guy just to kind of get. You had a no and a yes. Now I'm thinking like who else in between that would give you. A I mean, there's more. Anthony Edwards. Some people say worst case scenario, what if Jalen Green's J.R. Smith, mm. uh, which was a long time NBA player, but you know what I mean. You don't, yeah, you don't pass on that for if a guy if you think he's Tatum or yeah, whatever. Um, who's like a good i mean size aside um i guess like colin sexton just kind of a, a bucket getter yeah uh, but you gotta feel yeah you gotta feel a little bit more I'm no, not colin no, sexton no guy, knock yeah. no knock to colin sexton but like yeah like if you're even halfway considering this you need to be on you need to be yeah on that you bradley, need to be on, sure he's bradley beal mm-hmm Yep. And, and, and so I've, I typically dig in, I think we, we were talking before um, we started recording about, I just don't have the luxury of the time, but once I know where the Pistons are, I start to kind of dig in. I started doing that way before it just because of, you know, the, the, the season small... ended in February. Yeah. <laughs> and you can we kind of knew where we, you know, where we were going to be picking, right. Um, you know, best case, worst case. So I had a, you know, and you made me feel, very comfortable with a couple of guys I hadn't heard as much about um, to make me do a little bit of digging. But after I looked at all of this and I, and I thought, think about the intangible stuff, I think about how high Kate's floor is. Uh, mm-hmm. I wonder when, who's for the record, guy? I think Kate should be the pick and will be the pick. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's yeah, getting for the misconstrued record. by me. Yes. Yeah. People think that I'm like a Jalen green truther and it's like, no, I've been saying Kate the whole time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if you think, yeah, obviously if you think the kid's Kobe, then you, you get what you can for him. Or if right. you are in a Boston situation and you feel like someone's sleeping on this, if, if, if Jalen Green is the next Tatum and, yeah. and you feel that way and no one else does, then you do what you have to do. Right. Right. Um, And that's when you have to just trust the guys. At, trust you know. your homework. Trust yeah. your eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, you guys had a conversation around um, Diallo. Was it Diallo? Oh, me and Nick. Yeah, Diallo. Hamadou Diallo. Yeah, Diallo. Um, and you were you were we were talking about numbers. It was in it was in a, a recent uh, I think maybe mailbag of yours, but you questioned would they pay this guy twelve thirteen million dollars to sort of come off the bench, right? Mm-hmm. I I think about the two iterations of the, the, like the great runs that the Pistons had. I think about them being literally nine, 10 deep. Yeah. Um, and being, and, and between like super high IQ, super tough, they had these interchangeable like parts. And I, I wonder if let's say Cade's here, he's between he and Killian there one and two, however you want to slice it. Mm-hmm. You have Sadiq, uh Jeremy and then um Plumley or 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 Beef Stew, right? There's still minutes for Hamadou between the two and the three to to get him starter type minutes based on matchup, based on if he's high. Yeah, like, for sure. I just wonder if yeah, so I guess my thinking is. So Hamadou, I, if I had to guess, makes any will make annually anywhere between ten and thirteen. That's just a guess. I don't know. I obviously don't know sure, that. Sure. He doesn't know that yet. Um, I just don't know. Do you pay? And maybe you keep you you do it. Have him come off the bench at, to start to have him on ice in case Killian and Cade don't work. Um, but I just wonder. They have a chance to have some some significant cap space coming up. Um, they can really start formulating their team. Maybe that deal for Hamadou's a good deal, and you can trade it if need be. Um, I just don't know if – yeah, it's too, I mean, if it gets to – like, how much do you like him? Like, I'll pay $10 million for a guy to come off the bench. I don't mind. But, sure. like, if we're talking – if I have to go up to – if somebody else really likes him and makes me have to go to 13, 
I don't know if I'm paying 13 million for a guy that is still raw and isn't going to start for me. I don't know. Again, I think I said on the pod, like it might not be as tough a decision for them as I'm making it seem, sure. but yeah, I get, I get, I get both sides. Yeah, and I, I think that there's enough minutes um, for him. And if he does a four year deal at 13 million a year, that 13 million is going to look like, you know, projection, you know, even conservatively, it'll look like a, a, a very strategic, smart deal at the end of it, right? It's I think five. it would be three. Yeah. You don't, I don't, I think it would be a three year deal. You don't really see as many fours now. Mm-hmm. I would think three would be the max for a guy like that. And two is too, maybe two, but the, maybe they'd have to give up more money and an option or something. Yeah. yeah. To, to see how he, how he does. I just think that you're going to need guys like you're going to need guys. If you want to win a championship, you're going to need guys that should be starters or could be starters on other teams. Right. Right. And, and if he is, you know, he develops this, this, just this jump shot, which is a, don't even get me started on all of these 21 year olds are senior citizens, 18 year olds <laughs> are going to add all these things to their game. And yeah. very few of them ever do. Right. right. But, the, but these, polished the Sadiq Bays of the world is like, I don't know his floor, his silliness. It's like, come on, man. You at least know what you're getting. Right. You need guys that you know what you're going to get. Yeah, for sure. You need some of that, right? You need to know people's floor and all these ifs, ifs, ifs. And the one of the biggest ifs is if they can develop a jump shot. I think that, you know, that's tough. But anyway, I, I think that, yeah, he starts to hit those jumpers regularly. It, similar clip that he ended the year in and you know season in Detroit he can pay play 25 to 30 minutes now now you're really looking at like I just wonder where those minutes come from like I agree with you um my whole thing was so okay say you have Hamadou come off the bench Mm -hmm. you plan on bringing back Frank Jackson you you assume they still like Josh Jackson um, those are three guys, Killian starting at the one or the two, Cade starting at the one or the two. I don't know mm-hmm. if there's 25 minutes there for him. Um, and but if you bring Killian off the bench, who's strictly the backup point guard to Cade, and you start Hamadou, then you get the minutes. But I just don't think they're at the point where they maybe they start the season with Killian on the bench, but I would be very surprised. Yeah. Um, and that's the so again, Hamadou ain't on the team right now right. talking. So a lot of things right. have to happen before that. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of wonder where I'm looking at the two and the three, James. I guess that's where I move see Josh. It. Yeah, no, if, I get if it. Josh isn't part of the 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 you know long term plans necessarily. Right. If you which you we know, don't know, but he does right. have only one have he only does have one year left, and they are um they have guards that they like. Yeah, no, it's definitely yeah he he could not be part of the long term plans plans for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, it'd be that, interesting. I think, yeah, you, again, you know, another callback, right? We, you got to buy, you got to take a shot on some guys and hope that they develop. Right. And, and, and if you you look up and you go, man, we got this gym right here, you know, not only is he, he has a terrible contract now because people want him, but also you have a great talent that you can kind of plug in a a couple of different spots Uh, out, out in with, with the piston talk with um there's a couple the the second half of the year when Sadiq was starting and Jeremy was still playing um regularly they did some pick and roll stuff where they both based on size and like who was where they were doing some pick and roll stuff um and then sort of like ISO and this guy like on the high block uh, mm-hmm. Sadiq was doing some of that stuff. Jeremy was doing some of that stuff. It made me so excited. Like <laughs> versatility, it, just the versatility. Yeah, you're not used to that in Detroit, are you? Yeah, it was just Blake Griffin, really. It was these guys that we always wanted to have that were always killing us, right? And yeah, now no, we exactly. have some of those guys, right? Yeah, yeah. no, it's, 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 it's exciting to see. It's exciting. Credit to, to Troy for completely revamping a roster in eight months and, um, Detroit was as gloomy as as it gets 
prior to this past season and now adding the number one pick, you'd be hard pressed to find any non playoff teams more with more optimism. For sure. That that number one pick helps a great deal, but they, they were building something. And um, I still think that, that um, Plumlee has, has a role on a team, especially if a team that wants to win. Um, I was reading some, was it Hollinger did his little top 20 free agents? Yeah. And yeah, I, some of these guys are getting some decent money that eight and a half that, that Plumlee is getting. It doesn't look so crazy to me if you're winning. So I think the numbers in Hollinger's like equation, it's called boards. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily the money that that's not the money that they'll get. Right. It's that's, kind of like how equation. Yeah. It's like that. a weird equation. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think Plumlee's. I think there are teams who would trade for Mason Plumley. I don't think that's an untradeable contract. For I sure. think, yeah, I think you yes. could see how, where he could really be valuable. Right. And I think he still has value on a young team. Yeah. Um, Only two years left now mm-hmm. on the deal. It's not three. Yeah. 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 So I, yeah, I'm really happy with the, you know, the, the other pieces that he put together, like the nice mix of veterans and everything. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I get it. No, a lot of, this year I've been covering the team for I just finished up my fourth year um, and this was by far the most engaged that the fan base has been from start to bottom yeah from start to finish so yeah you can definitely tell there's that arena when fans can come back in full capacity it's not going to be like it used to be I don't think at least to start and then they lose some games people I was gonna like, say, ah, yeah. just watch from home yeah they, they, they're going to lose some games people but if they start the off like if they do something crazy oh i'm telling you people don't believe me when i say this lca if the pistons get good will be a better venue than the palace of auburn hills mm. people have the palace of auburn hills nostalgia because of what happened in there um, because of the players the dry, the players you're driving in the middle of nowhere and then you just see this big arena just like a spaceship right the way lca is constructed it's very much like a college arena everything is on top of the floor Mm, and it's very enclosed and i've been there for two playoff games very loud yeah i've been there when the raptors are in town and their crazy fans come to detroit yeah it gets very loud uh that's gonna be a home court advantage that you're gonna be proud of if the team ever gets to that point. Oh, that's exciting to even think about. That's exciting to even think about. Man, this this has been great. No, I, it was a lot of fun, man. I, I enjoyed that. Thank you. Like, I, you know, you don't know me uh, very well. <laughs> I got um, to know you today. I appreciate it. Yeah, you, you, you know, you, we, we chopped it up before, you know, we started recording and had some good hip hop talk. We definitely yeah. got to come back and, and, and talk about some of that. But I just appreciate the time, especially in the season. This, this You know, you got a couple of weeks out before the draft. I know your life is going to get even crazier. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to say thanks again for, uh, you know, giving me some time, man, and just chopping up. And, yeah, I, I trust me, you, st- you know, if I'm available and, like, engaged and i start if you start entertaining some of those texts about basketball man like <laughs> you may get more than you bargain for because i like i'll just get out because i only have a handful of guys now that really follow it right well enough to like well, that could like change not- but that could change though they could be back we'll see how the see how the how k does and how the team looks people will be back very quick you know yeah. how you know how detroit sports fans mm-hmm. are for sure for sure so um follow the ha- leader on behalf of James Edwards III, um, I am a Baxter E. Hall, and I just want to tell everyone out there that you are completely, completely capable. Just make sure that you embrace your own frequency. Um, man, this has been great. This is a great way to yeah, end my Yeah, thank you for having working. me. Yeah, yeah. I, pre- I appreciate your, your support throughout the years, and uh, yeah, it was a blast to finally chop it up, and yeah, we need to have we need to further dive into the the Andre versus Nas talk uh, at the, toward the end of the summer. We can break it down. We can we can each pull out a ver- we can go verse for verse. You know what we're gonna do? This is what we should do. Baxter's Buzz, the evening edition. We'll get we'll 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 post up. We'll grab some beverages maybe, 
yeah. and um do something in the evening and and you know talk some hip hop. I would love that. Yeah, just let me know, man, for sure. Okay. Well, cool. Thanks again, man. And uh I know you got some running around to do. Be safe out there on the road. And um until next time, peace. Appreciate you. Cool.